He couldn't quite get his glider here, but we're going to talk about that <laughs> and more with Mike and Chandra Patey. In the hangar. Hello and welcome to a special Air Venture in the hangar. Where are we, Chrissy? We are at the Flying Eyes booth here at Air Venture 2023. You use our discount code, taking off all caps one word, for 10% off here or online. So also we're sponsored by Clemens Insurance. Jerry has saved me a lot of money. Absolutely. But more on our sponsors later. We are here to talk with our good friends. Mike and Chandra Mike Patey. And Chandra Mike, Patey. Chandra, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Very happy to be here. All right, we're, let's just get to it right away. The burning question everybody has wants to know about. How in the world do you build a three-story concrete pool? <laughs> <laughs> With 900 yards of mud. Okay, all right, good. All right, now so that we got out that the out of the way. Anything else going question. on in your life? Anything yeah. new? <laughs> um, well, we're working on a couple aircraft. My wife and I are both building Cubs at the same time. I'll sell mine when we're done, uh, but it's just fun to build two matching aircraft together. I've got Scrappy, of course, so when we're done building her Cub, I'll sell the one I built to ride the ride with her, and we'll go back to Scrappy. And I'm okay. keeping mine. <laughs> and you're keeping See, yours. there you go. I'm stingy. <laughs> Perfect. I uh, heard that you were building a glider. Yeah, you want to you talk know, about that? In, in my mind, I wanted to be able to do 400 knots and glide. Perfect. <laughs> I just really didn't want to do it in the same airplane. <laughs> right, right. All right. All right, well, real quick, take us through. I know your video, and we'll put a link to it somewhere up there. Uh, your video is amazing. Just the, the story, just awe inspiring of what happened. But kind of just quickly run through what happened on the way here to Air Venture. Right. So um, there's even on my video, there's several minutes. Uh, the higher air traffic control frequency didn't get a recording. I was only able to get the handoff to approach control. So the first moment that everything went bad was just unexpected. Slightest vibration before I could ask if my buddy Josh felt it. The explosion went off. The plane yawed hard when you got enough power to go over 400 knots. It kicked, but fortunately, Garmin Autopilot was on. It kept it from wanting to roll because that's the counter also that could have happened. So it just yawed. The Autopilot held it straight. I grabbed the controls, turned the Autopilot off. That's a natural instinct of mine. I'm more comfortable hand on, flying, hand it, flying yeah. it. So I grabbed the stick. Um, at that exact same moment, the cockpit filled with smoke, which was a little confusing in the air because I designed the system to pick up the air right behind the prop so that if something happened in the engine, it didn't come in the cockpit. I didn't know that the explosion that happened blew a hole through the can, oh. then went through my oil cooler like a shotgun shell went through it, went through my wire harness, and then blew out the intake duct that ran from the front of the plane into the cockpit. And so all that oil, smoke, and exhaust blew into the plane on that first explosion. How did you deal with the smoke? So fortunately, um, it didn't light on fire. I worried about it the whole way down and wanted to get down as quick as possible to an airport I could land on. But um, fortunately, where it blew the hole into it, the duct is still in line. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as the heat came off of the engine and, and all that heat dissipated, the smoke stopped coming off of the engine and naturally the forced air through the induction blew through and gave me all the fresh air it was designed oh, to do. Good. So the smoke self-evacuated. The only thing left um, for visibility once the smoke got out of the cabin was the windshield was covered in oil, but it was more like um, looking through a severe heavy rainstorm, just okay. like a, a fog glaze. I could still see shapes and ground and sky. I could still see horizon. It was just kind of blurry that stayed the whole way down but that's not bad now did the explosion hurt any of your wiring for the airplane yeah so it did hurt the it took out the the entire front harness that fortunately didn't have to run critical things part of the stuff on the engine but that's already gone yeah. and landing lights things like that um, it did blow through fast enough that it exploded the harness not one wire left connected i didn't even find the other end yet i'm sure oh, when i wow. decal but that harness had a hot and a ground lead that were within a, literally a quarter inch of each other, and it didn't even pop the breaker. It just blew through it so quick it didn't pop the breaker, but those two leads were live in that oil bath. Oh, so wow. Wow. That could have gone really bad really fast, so I feel really fortunate. When did you find out? Yeah. 
Well, I didn't. I got a phone call, and I thought, oh, he's made it, you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> he made it somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So he, uh, I didn't know that anything had gone wrong. And he calls and he says, well, I'm down, safe. And I said, oh, that's great. How's Oshkosh? And he, <laughs> he goes, well, I had an engine out. And for a minute, my brain kind of, well, it pooped its pants a little bit. I was like, okay, is he kidding or is he, you know. You never know. You kid Mike. a lot yeah, with that, you never Mike. Know. He was really calm. Oh, he wasn't freaking out at all. And, and he says, no, I lost my engine. I, he goes, I'm at MST. <laughs> and uh, I, sa- I, I said, MST? MST? RST. R- oh, yeah, sorry. RST. I'm at RST, <laughs> and I said, I said, well, where's that? So I, I looked, and I said, well, he's in Minnesota. Wow, you were so close. And, and he he went through, uh, you know, kind of what happened. And <sighs> Did you short circuit? A lot of emotion, <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what right. the heck? You know, and then, um, but, you know, clearly he's talking to me on the phone, so that's reassuring that, you know, okay, it's okay. And I, I said, was anybody hurt? You know, I mean, I was really worried um, about him that way. But, yeah, both of them are completely fine, th- thankfully. So I think that's just, this, you know, the biggest concern. She was your first phone call, right? Oh, don't, don't, don't answer that question. Continue. <laughs> 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 no, I, I started, I, I wanted to get all the stuff out of the way, talk to the tower, talk to the FAA, make right. a few calls. Let me, let me just... Uh, stay in the business side of what I right. need to get handled. The air, the airplane clear of the runway. The tower talked to. Once I got everything settled, I gave my yeah. wife. Okay, no. that's you fair. Get, that's yeah, fair. you got to get that because okay. then it's going to become emotional. So yeah. 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 <laughs> um, Mike, I talked to you briefly yesterday, and uh, you said it was kind of business as usual until one point in the flight. Take me through that. Yeah. So I've been test flying all of my creations, always. And um, this one was so unexpected. For some reason, in my mind, when it happened, it's just me. Right. Like, it, it's, it's emergency procedures, fuel pumps, shut off fuel, shut things down, talk to ATC, pick my airport. And all that's just going. Um, I get hyper-focused um, is typically my reaction. Usually an hour after the event, I get a little emotional. Like, that's not good. But during an event, I, I get focused. When they said how many souls on board, it like clicked out of focus, math, distance, time. Like I'm, I'm a numbers guy, like right. I can't help it. But as soon as they said how many souls on board, it, it certainly pulled me out of my zone. My zone is in, in the book and in the event. And it pulled the emotional side in for just long enough for me to go, no, someone's with me. That was... That was painful to say two. Like I, I wanted to say one so right. badly, and uh, to say two souls on board that was hard. That was hard, and I had to say it, and then just say, you know what? I got some clouds and IMC to go through and an airport to land on. Let's let's get them down on the ground and focus back on what I need to do. And I, I was going to say I can attest to the fact that you know we've been in some situations, and he is a rock in those situations when something happens he is solid and he just goes to work and if if you just be quiet and don't interrupt he can can fix just about anything so i have to say that he's he's my favorite pilot and he's the best pilot in my in my opinion well i don't know about the best fortunately he's still your favorite pilot we got we got down this time i uh, someone says you could probably do that several times i said look let me just pretend I did a mic drop and walk away because <laughs> right. I don't want to do it again. Let's just, yeah. we did it once. Now let's you not, can say you never did it again. Let's not assume I could do it twice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so we're, what, three, four days later now, um, and you've got the video out, uh, and the other guy in the plane was your video guy. So yeah. that, that um, yay for us video guys. Um, <laughs> but what, uh, what's new, what, what's, what do you know now that you didn't know when the video was made? Um, I haven't learned any more now because right, right after I got a call to my wife and I went and ate, kind of settled, I went and took the plane apart. I just could not wait. So uh, I had a few hours before my flight home. So I took the plane apart and I learned, I think, all I can learn until we do some uh, metal analysis and, and dive further into it. Um, just uh, Pratt & Whitney's been amazing. They're yeah. great. They're, this, this is not... A Pratt and Whitney failure in my right. book. This is a operational failure, probably from Ghost Gone Past. It's an older engine, 
Um, that's what I truly believe. Yeah. Um, I feel like maybe things that never get in logs, there isn't data recording on older aircraft or old King Airs that, that follow the, mo the engine along in its future. I, I suspect it had some hard life and hard times and uh, we didn't know it. It, it. it happened to follow me and yeah. uh, I was the one that got it. It's almost got Apollo it. 13 kind of situation. It just, you just don't know till it happens. Yeah. So. Well, we're glad that you made it down safely and we Thank look you. forward to learning more about it as you guys progress in the investigation. Yeah, when we scheduled this originally, and now we can move on to actually what I had scheduled to talk about, <laughs> you guys had an amazing time this past year in Dubai. So we'll, uh, you know, we'll talk about the landing and, and all the stuff that went on with that. But first, Chandra, this is important to me. You went skydiving. Oh I did. I had never been skydiving before, and I was terrified, huh? Yes. <laughs> you were terrified. Yes. I, we, but I, she went. I have no idea how she did it. Oh, really? I'm telling you, I've been taking, I've taken my kids skydiving. I love skydiving. And the thought of her going was a hard no <laughs> forever. See, and she I feel snuck, the same. She snuck it up on me because in Dubai, we got offered to go to one of the most iconic dives, skydives in the world and uh, said, hey, we should take you out and go. And, and she goes, Okay, I think I'll do that. And I think my my jaw was so far on the floor, I had yeah. to drag it around a while. I don't know what happened, but she went for it. If I'm ever going to do this, this is the time to do this. You know, I'm, I, I mean, it's such a beautiful, beautiful place to jump. Oh, my gosh. And you know what's funny is we, we actually went on a zip line that it's one of the longest zip lines. It starts at the top of a hotel and goes down through the city and over the river wow. and stuff. I couldn't open my eyes on that one. You're you're hanging at the ground and you're by yourself, you know, and you're just sitting there with this thing. Yeah, I've and, been ziplining. It's terrifying. Okay, well, I did that and I, I had my eyes closed and I, I had a hard time opening them. And I was I was afraid that I was going to do that again when we jumped out of the plane. But we jumped out and I opened my eyes and it was like the greatest thing ever. Oh really? my gosh. I have seen the greatest amazing. thing ever. And you know what is crazy is when somebody else is strapped to you and they know what they're doing, you're like, okay, well, their life is on the line too. So if I go, I'm not alone. <laughs> I have so many questions. Okay. First okay. question okay. is what made you like finally decide, like, I don't care if it's Dubai or not, I'm like terrified. Well, so what made you finally like, yes, I will cross over into the skydive world? To be honest, I've always wanted to, but it's always just terrified me. You yeah, know, so I, plummeting I, I to your death the, is quite terrifying. I had the desire, but, you know, it just wasn't something that I'm just going to go and book on a, you know, a day at home. I mean, we have we have a couple of skydive schools pretty close by and I thought yeah maybe I'll go, go do that sometime but still that just the thought of it's scary well and I'm kind of afraid of heights I know a lot of pilots are same. afraid of heights same which is really weird but Dean took me on the lift this morning yeah and I like when he wasn't even all the way up yet and I was crouching down <laughs> yeah. I, I literally said this is why I am scared of going hot air ballooning like so <laughs> you know I think the thing the difference between the zip lining and the skydive was when we were we were loaded up and ready to do the zip line they're like, okay, are you ready? Okay, we're gonna count it down, and just everything inside you just goes, Wah, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, this time, you know, we have the guy, and I'm thinking, okay, we're gonna get out and get ready, and I'm gonna have a minute to whatever. And so we get we get out in the door, and he just he just hucks, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, okay, here we are, we're going. And did we you did pee yourself? Free fall. So they actually ended up <laughs> taking us um, up to fifteen thousand. 15,000 yeah. feet. And so we did a free fall for like 3,000 feet. Right. And um, I just thought, okay, I, I settled for a minute while we were falling. And I'm like, okay, well, this, I can do this. And I, you know, this up, is up it. that high, it feels like you're just standing still anyway with just a massive. Yeah, except, wind. I mean, there's, I'm going to there's pee a lot of everywhere. Pressure. I just want everybody to know. <laughs> what? I'm going to pee everywhere. Oh. <laughs> it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> No, but I mean, oh my God. it just, they have it adult was, diapers. You're okay. It was get, so get wicked. Well, it depends. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> nice. <laughs> what was, okay. So let me ask you this then. Would you do it again? I totally would do it again. Yes. Really? Yes. 
I have to say it was one of the most exhilarating, amazing experiences. And it helps that, you know, these guys are professionals. It was ex Dubai. They do it every day, all day, and they know what they're doing. And, you know, I mean, you are putting your faith and trust in someone else. And I had full confidence in yeah, the, I the person I was. Yeah, I want to throw thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, one, was it was one year ago that we sat here and Christy agreed that if we hit 100,000 subscribers, she's going to jump. And I've been convincing people to unsubscribe ever since. <laughs> yeah, she's, subscribe, she's, subscribe. Been working the, she's been working the show <laughs> opposite down. Oh, I know, I know. It's been a real struggle. <laughs> yeah, my the goal, struggle is real. My goal is to offend as many subscribers as possible. <laughs> well, so I that thought they that was my job. <laughs> <laughs> well, Christy, what we need to do is find you a really cool place to dive where the scenery is pretty and it can distract you from that. Ah! <laughs> well, Carrie McCauley is um, a ferry pilot who's also 20,000 jumps, and he was the one that was on the show, and, and I'm thinking we'd do something with Carrie. If we must. <laughs> if we you must. Let, and we must. must. <laughs> Chandra, so has Chandra is saying you must. Maybe, Chandra you guys, has maybe we could go to Utah. Okay, you know what? I'll make you a deal. Ooh, like this. Okay. I will jump with you. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> this is a lot of pressure, you guys. <laughs> no, but you have. This you know, is peer sure. pressure in action. If I've ever seen it, it's like three to one. You might want to just get up and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. All right, we'll move if on. If Chandra now. jumps with me, then I'll consider. Yep. Then I'll do it. Then I'll do, do it. it. All right. I'll do so it if Chandra goes with me. Mike, the Red Bull uh, Dubai stunt, take us through that. Um, you know, that was uh, a surprise. I got a call kind of in the middle of nowhere and said, hey, do you want to do a unique aircraft build? We need you to do something special for us. And I said... And you got all this spare time. And I said, nah, I don't know what it is, but I can't. There's just no way. Um, I'm building a house and these other planes and a military project. I, I just can't do it. And they said, well, we haven't told you what it is yet. And then they told me we want to land on the Burj Al Arab in Dubai with a Cub. And it's 78 feet. I was like, dang it. I really want to that. That actually sounds pretty cool. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm like, what are you so thinking? So it's like, yeah, they threw yeah, the physical and they threw it and out. And then I started playing with numbers and, and saying, well, you guys, if we need to get the safety margins, then it needs to be custom built. It needs to be custom weighted. It and needs the only to be person that could do it is. No, there's lots of, there's <laughs> others that can do it, but. I, I, I felt like, you know, yeah, that's that's up my alley. Let's 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 tweak an airplane. So I I did put another build on hold and jumped on that one and knocked it out real fast and we got to go to Dubai and that was that was exciting. That was fun. It was on my bucket list to go there, so that worked too. Perfect. Okay, so now I want to go to something more personal. I interviewed your brother Mark in in uh, Perry and he said something that uh, kind of to me, it uh, showed the key to the Patey success. And that was that you guys encourage each other. Encourage is the word. Would you say, would you say that the word encouragement is the glue that runs through the Patey family? Absolutely, 100%. I, I feel like um, there's a lot of people that have an idea, a goal, a passion, and they're like, maybe I should try this, maybe I shouldn't. And, and quite frankly, sometimes their ideas are really bad. Right. But they should still go for it. Okay. And here's why. Um, and hopefully they have people around them. So I, I think I'm going to try and talk to the people that are around the people that want to go after something. Like Give skydiving. encouragement. No, because the, the reality is everybody's already nervous wanting to start a new company wanting to go out on a limb. Maybe they're going to quit their job to try it. Right. And, and maybe it's not even a great idea. But just remember that that person's coming to you because they have a passion and a drive and they're asking you for thoughts or ideas. It, it's your obligation to encourage them to go for their dream, even if it's not going to work. And you need to also have the obligation to say, I don't really know that that's a good idea, but have you thought of this or that? And either way, go for it. Because some of mine and Mark's failures were our biggest learning curves to our success. Mm -hmm. And if you don't go out and try it and you don't encourage someone to go for it that's asking for it, they're, gonna, they're not going to do it. 
I'm telling you, they're already looking for 10 reasons not to start that company. In their head, they have talked themselves out of doing that thing a hundred different ways from Sunday. Yeah. And you need to be the person that says, you know what? There's some few flaws in it. There's a few holes. Let's talk about those, but go for it. Jump, take the risk. I'm here for you. I'll support you. I'll help you. Whatever you need, I'm here. And encouragement will make the difference between a failure and a future success, or maybe the success the first time. But, I, but you're going to fail if you don't go after it. And if you're not supporting your kids, your family to try, then you help them fail. And that's, that's not what we do as family. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. 100%. Wherever that came from, I love it. I saw it on The Office. All right. <laughs> I agree completely. So encouragement is key. Any follow-up to that? Well, just that, you know, we're not, we don't exist just to simply exist. You know, we got we to find our passions and cultivate those. And I think, who would I be as a wife if I didn't encourage my husband to live his dreams, you know, and, and him for me as well. So I think it's critical that we do that for each other so that we can actually live and experience. And you guys are doing it together, which yeah. is, that's always the goal. It's nice. Yeah. It's, nice to have the, it's nice to have um, passions, similar passions, and then, you know, to yeah. also have your own things too. I mean, that's okay as well. I love you guys so much. <laughs> we love you guys. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming back, joining us on this. As always, it's awesome to have both of you. On well, the show. thank you. We'll thank talk you. more offline about the, <laughs> about the, to about your death. the thing. And yeah. real the quick, thing. I'm going to take over the show okay. for a second. Guys, time. taking off is awesome. These guys do great things. They're out here in the sun, in the heat, every Oshkosh, putting on great content, wholesome content. So if you haven't subscribed here, just don't pass this by. Get a hold. Lock on to these guys. They are supporting aviation. We love them. They are our family. And so lock on, join our family together, and we'll see you next time on In the Hangar. <laughs> <laughs> also, before we go away, I do want to thank our sponsors. Oh, God. So uh, Clemens Insurance, we mentioned Flying Eyes, we mentioned being, but also 67 Designs, 67D.com. Great American-made camera mounts, iPhone mounts. Uh, Z Vision, the brightest landing taxi lights out there. Marshall Protective Services, MPSProtects.com, and Colton Mortgage, ColtonTakingOff.com for your residential mortgage. I have nothing else to add. We'll see you guys. <laughs> <laughs>